Thank you all. I appreciate you allowing me a few minutes just to give you an update on our custom carousel. Um, and it's timely because we're coming just to the end of the process um, and beginning of construction. Um, it's going to be installed in the Wharf District Park, it's opposite Fanwell Hall Marketplace and Christopher Columbus Park. And it'll be in the same location, set back just a little bit. We'll adjust the footprint a bit so that we can have um, sort of a robust landscaping and um, our carousel park, uh, which we're really excited about. Um, all of the funds for the carousel have been privately raised. And um, we are engaging right now in a multidisciplinary design team. So we're working with Commodore Builders, who will be our general contractor, and Carousel and Carvings. And they are out of Ohio. And they will actually be constructing the carousel itself. And that will be shipped from Ohio. The individual characters are being hand carved um, by uh, Jeffrey Briggs in Briggs Design. And he's a local artist in Newburyport. Um, they're amazing. If you've seen any of them online or been in the Conservancy offices, please stop by. We've got some of the completed characters, and they're all hand carved, all hand painted. They're going to be beautiful. It's um, unique um, to New England and Boston. And we engaged in four public meetings and have gone through extensive public feedback and agency review. And uh, the actual characters are based on um, charrettes and meetings that we did with Boston Public School children. And they actually did their own artist renderings. And Jeff was able to take those children's designs and actually create characters that would be on the carousel from those designs, which is really, really neat. So we're excited about that. We are looking to complete procurement of our general contractor by the end of January. And this has gone through several iterations, but at the, our January 29th board meeting, we will be taking up the final contract so the construction can begin. And we're hoping to go into the ground in March and have a construction schedule from March and targeting an opening of the new custom carousel for Labor Day weekend of this year, 2013. So hopefully everything will stay on, on schedule, but it looks to be so, so we're excited about that. Um, we also worked with the Institute for Human Centered Design, and we're incorporating a couple of different principles we just meet. This is going to be the only handicapped accessible carousel in New England. And we're also, um, we have one of the characters that were made stationary so that we can actually have children with sensory perception issues also ride the carousel. So um, really unique to, to the whole region and we're, we're proud about that and, and really being that thoughtful about the design. We're going to have a longer operating season, so it'll be early April through um, first night hopefully. And towards the end, that shoulder season may be just weekends, but we're hoping to actually be open through first night. And one of the provisions of the construction of the carousel is going to be a winter enclosure. So even when we close it after first night, we'll be able to light it inside for the rest of the winter. So it'll actually be a design um, piece on the greenway as well, not just the carousel for, for, the, for the warm months. Ticket prices will remain the same. They're not going up. They're going to remain the same at $3. And we'll continue to work with the community on discounted events and tickets like that for for community members, so we'll, we'll work with you folks on that as well. And part of the carousel park that will surround the actual carousel will be um, a ticket booth, will be um, tables and chairs, um, and, and other amenities, and a leaning rail for parents and grandparents to actually um, be by the carousel and watch their kids go around and out of the carousel. We'll continue to maintain that section of the park organically, um, as we do for the rest of the three, three miles of the park. And um, we're looking at um, proceeds from the new custom carousel to more than double. So we're increasing revenue to the conservancy. And again, all of the proceeds from the custom carousel will go back to programming in the Greenway. Automatically go back to free programs on the Greenway. So we do have a couple of renderings. You can come up and take a look. But this is um, the new carousel design. Carousel, thank you very much. And this is the carousel park. Um, so I can take a couple of questions if you want. Now, where's the ticket booth? Um, the ticket booth will be within Carousel Park. Um, and I don't know if they have it out right here. Looks like you have a left over here. I believe that's, yes. And there'll be tables and chairs. Where, where will the year's food truck? Um, that's a great question. And I think um, when we finally do vending, um, there won't be a truck here for the 2013 vending schedule. And I can double check on that. But we'll certainly. Um, we got it through Jesse Brackman, our Asian Cooperating Officer, but we'll certainly have um, a good truck in the vicinity. That's 
some point during the program. So yes, I, Sean? Yeah, uh, Sean, I'm just curious. We went to the construction, obviously, of the, uh, the Harbor Pavilion uh, mm -hmm. structure there. How much of the space at that end of the Greenway will be closed off during construction and with circulation around yep. from a pedestrian yeah. standpoint? We're finalizing that right now with Commodore. Um, and we're using, they, they have um, some folks we're working with. We're, we're meeting with transportation, we're meeting with ISD, and we'll make sure that as much of this site is accessible to the public during construction. So do you think the family will all link over to what the what the sea will remain open? Um, they're finalizing that. We're, we're hoping that is the case. And it may not be for the full amount of time of construction, but we're hoping to have as much access as possible. And obviously safety is also a concern. So if the section of the site needs to be closed off, we will do so just to make sure that the public is safe to use. Yes. Um, I couldn't hear all that you said, but it sounded as though you said that um, revenues will double. Yes. How would you know that? Um, just from estimates on ridership. Um, and they've done research by contracting, um, contacting uh, carousel vendors across the country and doing, you know, um, surveys. And they're estimating that we will double revenue with this new custom carousel. How much is it? Um, that I can get you that exact figure. I don't have the exact figure on the top of my head, but I can certainly provide it to to folks here. It was all private money. Amy, um, who's going to maintain this structure? Uh, we are the conservancy will maintain it, and we are in the process of determining whether we will actually run it or we will hire a carousel. Uh, contractor to run the day-to-day -day operations, and um, we will make that decision very soon. But we may even operate it ourselves. Hey, you have a question? Yeah, what's the diameter of the carousel, and how many total characters are there going to be on? Um, I believe there's going to be a total of 20-something characters, Nate. Um, I can I can email you the exact dimensions and that information. Some of those characters are like lobsters, yeah, and all butterflies, lobster, butterfly, um, <laughs> owl, grasshopper, some fox, all based on uh, Boston children. I happen to be at the Columbus Park uh, meeting the other night. Two other people from the English presenters. Oh, great. Okay. We're trying to make you know. David? Yeah. Hey, Robert. Uh, I have a quick question. You said that the money was donated for the carousel. Yes. Uh, did that include the money for the demolition for what's already there? Yeah, that would include construction. And there uh, <coughs> won't be a whole lot of whole lot of um, demo. The carousel, the temporary carousel, just goes up and moves. Yeah. But yes, the entire cost of construction is included in that. Question over here? Yeah. Um, the exterior about margin. I have two questions. Uh, the money that was donated, was it all Boston residents? No, it was a uh, it varied. A lot of Boston residents, a lot of um, people out of state as well. Now you have a nice. donor we paid by capital. We have one anonymous donor that initiated this whole process. She she wanted a, a carousel and she um, uh, contributed the first first major gift. And the second question is, um, what type of liability insurance would we get? Because essentially this is a, an amusement facility mm -hmm. on a median strip yep. with four planes of traffic yeah, of which some of them are um, full gas tanks. We have we'll have the same insurance we pull insurance for the, for the temporary carousel as well. So um, we will work with our our carrier, but we will definitely have insurance. And do we have um, police on site? I'm sorry. Do we have police on site to direct traffic? Um, no, I don't believe so. I don't think that's going to be necessary. We'll have staff. We'll have staff on site to to work with folks and. Indirect uh, patrons, but I don't think we're going to have police. How many more staff will you need to hire if you don't contract out the operation? And will there be a director of carousel? Um, I don't think there'll be a director of carousel, and I don't think the intent is to, I don't believe the intent is to hire any additional staff at this time, but that may change um, as we. As we move forward, that's a good question. Yeah, you have a question? Yes, Matt Conti. Hi. You said it was all private money, but um, didn't Mass Development contribute $250,000 to the construction under their cultural facilities fund that was apportioned uh, by the governor? Um, that was probably during the beginning of the process. I think it was a match. And I can confirm that for you. Yeah, I have the press release. I mean, okay. So, yeah. if that's the case. 
What happens? Uh, you can laugh your concrete street. What happens to the current carousel and the people who run it? We they just will no longer be unless we decide to um, reach out to a vendor to actually run the carousel. Then they can, you know, file you know an R an RFP to be that person. But aside from that, um, you know, we will no longer be working directly with them. Was the current carousel a rental? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Can we ask you one other question? Yes. Uh, of has the process of replacing uh, Nancy Brennan been decided? No. Well, that's a good question, and I think the board will, will take its time to, you know, be thoughtful about how to move forward. And obviously, you know, it's been uh, we're in a different place than we were when seven years ago. So I think that they'll look, you know, to decide exactly what qualifications are needed and how to move forward. Is there something else? Yeah, it was just, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a follow-up question. Could be the question you just asked. Where they haven't picked a new director, will that delay the scheduling for this? Not at all. Not at all. So may they have something on the January meeting? About, about the process? Uh, good question. I, I, that's not been decided. That's not been decided. Okay. Do you know what you said in February? shortly, but um, we're trying to figure that out if we can actually fit it into another section of the park without disrupting regular programming. Right. That would be good if anybody knows know what that is. Yeah, I think we're not, we're not sure, um, okay. but hopeful. Big commercial street. How much profit did you make from the current carousel last year? Uh, those, those figures are public now. Yep, they are, and I believe um, off the top of my head it's just shy of $100,000 Roughly like that. So for all that, you make the double, yep. $20,000. Yeah, roughly, yep. If it costs two, two and a half million dollars to build, that's really a good return. Uh, and I assume it's going to last for quite a few years. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great. I appreciate that.